So we're very close to the end of this problem. And let's just briefly recap what has happened so far. So we were dealing with the double direct delta potential well, and then we were looking for the solutions where xi of x is an even function and the case where xi of x is an odd function. And then we found that the constant k for the case where xi of x is an even function satisfies this equation. And for the case where xi of x is an odd function, the constant k satisfies this equation. And then don't forget that in this problem we're actually looking for, we're trying to find the uh, allowed energy levels that the double direct delta potential would uh, admit. So our goal now is to really to solve these two equations. If we can solve this equation, if we can find the value of k such that this equation is satisfied, we would have found the energy levels that would be possible for the case where xi of x is an even function. And the same for this case, if we can solve this equation, if we can find the k, uh, the value of k such that this equation is satisfied, then we would have found the allowed energy levels for the case where xi of x is an odd function. So don't forget, k is related to the energy levels by this equation. So our goal is to really solve this equation to find what k should be, and then that would allow us to deduce what e should be. And finding e would allow us to find the energy levels that the double direct delta potential would admit. So that energy levels that would be possible under the setup of the double direct delta potential. And then for the case of the even function, this actually very obviously has a solution because if you would graph uh, this, uh, graph the two separate functions over here, so this is the k-axis and this is a function of k, you can see that here you have a e to the power of negative 2ka, which would look something like this. And then here you have a linear function that has an intercept at negative 1, so your your uh, graph for this side would look something like this, and you can see that no matter what, there would obviously always be an intersection point. And so that's why for the case of the even function, I know that from this graph, I'm guaranteed a solution. I'm guaranteed that I would be able to find a value of k uh, such that this, uh, this equation can be satisfied. And that value of k would be the value of k that corresponds to this intersection point. So note that this graph, the slope of this graph is always positive because all the constants here, m, alpha, and h bar square are all positive. And so that's why this is always positive. And if this is always positive, you can tell, obviously, from this setup over here that there's always a solution. So uh, so we can we are assured that for the case where xi of x is an even function, there is going to be one bound state. So the bound state will have an energy level that will correspond at, uh, to the k that is given by the location where the intersection happens. So the case for the so for the case where xi of x is an even function, it's fairly easy to find a find the answer. But for the case of an odd function, the situation is not as simple because as we have stated before uh, at the end of the last video, uh, once again we graph something similar. So for the e to the power of negative 2ka, we have a graph that looks something like this. So this is a k-axis, this is f of k. And then here we have a graph that intersects at positive 1, which is this point. So note that uh, this function also intersects at k is uh, also intersects uh, the point where f of k is equal to 1 at k is equal to 0 because e to the power of 0 is just equal to 1. And here you have a negative sloped uh, linear function. So your function would look something like this. And then you can see that if it is sloped in such a way, then obviously there is going to be an intersection at this point. And then this k over here would be our solution to this equation. It would be the k such that this equation is satisfied. But then note that <coughs> the slope of this graph is really dependent on how we set these constants. So it's really dependent on your alpha over here. So don't forget this alpha is multiplied to the direct delta uh, potential. So depending on the value of alpha, we might have a solution and we might not. So if this graph is sloped like this, then we have a solution. If, it's, if it is sloped in such a way that it, where it is tangent to this point, so this is a very bad drawing, but let's just say this is a tangent. If it is tangent to this point, then the solution is just k is equal to zero, which is which ends up with xi of x not being normalizable, so it's not a solution that we want. And if this graph is even steeper, then these solutions wouldn't work as well because you would get a, a, a intersection where k is negative and that is not what we want. Uh, it doesn't work for k is equal to negative because k shouldn't be negative. So we want to find a condition where we can be sure that this graph would be uh, not so steep such that we would always have uh, such that we would have a solution. So we want to find a condition such that uh, we would get this graph, this nice graph where we had it we would have an intersection. So uh, it would be easier to analyze this case if we simplify this term over here by making a few substitutions. So instead of writing out all these symbols, 
So let me just copy this down one more time. So let's just say instead of e to the power of negative 2ka, I write this out as e to the power of negative z. So z is going to be equal to 2ka. And then with this substitution, you can see that you have h bar squared divided by m alpha. And the k is just equal to z divided by 2a. And then now I'm going to group all these constants up together. And then I'm going to call this constant c. So c is going to be equal to h bar squared divided by 2a m alpha. So I have 1 minus cz. So you can see that this expression is much easier to deal with. So we have e to the power of negative z equal to 1 minus cz. So obviously this is much easier to deal with than this expression here, which is much more complicated with all the constants and everything. And then so if we can find the value of z such that this equation is satisfied, then we can use this relationship to deduce what k is, which would give us the allowed energy level. So now we can try to analyze this simpler form and see if we can find a condition such that there would be meaningful intersections. So e to the power of negative c. So this is the z-axis, this is uh, your axis for the function you're dealing with. So e to the power of negative z, this just looks something like this. And then let's try to look for the, for the point where, for the case where uh, this linear graph is going to be tangent at this point. So it's tangent at this point. And if it's tangent at this point, that means the slope of this linear curve, uh, this linear graph, is going to be equal to the uh, derivative of e to the power of negative z at this very point where z is equal to 0. So if we let f of z be equal to e to the power of negative z, we differentiate this, which is just e to negative e to the power of negative z. And if we evaluate this at z is equal to 0, we have negative 1. So at this very point, this e to the power of negative z graph is going to have a slope of negative 1. So if our slope of our linear graph C, uh, is equal to negative 1, so if, if c is equal to 1, then it would have a slope of uh, negative 1, so you, you would get 1 minus z. So this would be exactly this straight line over here, which is tangent at this very point. So note that this is not uh, the kind of behavior we're looking for, because in such a case, we only have this intersection where z is equal to 0, which would just give us k is equal to 0, which means you get a not normalizable solution, So which is not what we want. But we're interested in this case because if we can, if we know that when c is equal to 1, you're going to get a tangent. So if we can just make this linear uh, graph over here less, uh, less steep, if we can just make it flatter, then we would be able to ensure that we would get a meaningful intersection at this point. And so that means we need to make our graph less steep than negative 1. So that means in order to have a solution, we need to allow c to be smaller than 1. So this is the condition we're looking for. If c is smaller than 1, then this graph would be flat enough such that there would be this meaningful intersection. And then also note that uh, c is given by this expression. All these constants are positive, so uh, I, I'm not writing this out, but yeah, just note that c is larger than 0. So you won't get a case where, where this graph is going to go upwards. So obviously for that case, that doesn't work as well, but we don't have to worry about this case because c is positive. So when c is smaller than 1, there would be an intersection point. So that means when c is smaller than 1, there would be an, uh, there would be an energy level that would be allowed for the double uh, direct delta potential for the case where xi of x is an odd function. And then uh, going back to this, we know that we need to allow c to be smaller than 1. So that means h bar squared divided by 2 am alpha must be smaller than 1. So if I dump alpha to the other side, that means we need to allow, we need to ensure that alpha be larger than h bar square divided by 2 am. So if we restrict alpha to be larger than h bar square divided by 2 am, then we, we would be sure that this, the case where xi of x is an odd function, would have an energy, allowed energy level. So only if alpha satisfies this inequality would there be a solution for the case where xi of x is an odd function. So if this is not satisfied, if, so let me just get rid of some of this junk. So if alpha is smaller than or equal to h bar squared divided by 2 am, there would be no allowed energy levels for the case where xi of x is an odd function. The physics simply does not allow it. So there will be no possible solution. So this gives us this conclusion over here. So that, that is that if alpha is larger than h bar squared divided by 2 am, then we would have two bound states. So one of the one of the bound states 
would be the solution you get from the case where xi of x is an even function and the other case is where xi of x is an odd function. So for these two separate equations you would get a separate solution for k which you would get from the intersection of this graph which would allow us to deduce what the allowed energy level is. And then the second case is when alpha is smaller than or equal to h bar squared divided by 2am. And in this case there's only one possible bound state. So that one bound state would correspond to the bound state you get from the case where xi of x is the even function because as we've seen here we will always get a solution for this case. But for the case where xi of x is an odd function if alpha falls within this region then you can see that this graph is going to be too steep for there to be any meaningful intersections. So this is the final conclusion we can draw. Uh, it depends on alpha. If alpha is larger than this value, you will get two bound states. If alpha is smaller than or equal to this value, then you'll get one bound state. So this is the solution, the final conclusion we can draw from this problem. And then the problem actually also tells us to, to consider the cases where alpha is equal to h bar squared divided by uh, ma. So ma and the case where alpha is equal to h bar squared divided by 4 ma. So you can plug these in, plug these values of alpha into these uh, these two equations, and you can solve them graphically. So I'm not going to go through there, uh, go through there in this video. Uh, you'll have to do that yourself. So all you have to do is just to use a computer, graph it, uh, graph these functions for these particular values of alpha, and then notice where the intersection happens. And then for these two cases, you can see that obviously for this case where alpha is equal to h bar squared divided by m a, this is obviously this obviously lies within this region over here. So for this uh, case for uh, alpha, there, you, you would expect there to be two bound states. So if you substitute this alpha into this equation, you will get one solution. If you substitute it into this equation, you will get another solution. So you get two en allowed energy levels. And then for this case, h bar squared divided by 4 ma, you can see that it obviously falls into this region. And then you can see that for this region, there will be only be one bound state. And then uh, that bound state will correspond to the solution for the even function. Uh, for the case where xi of x is an even function. So once again, you take this value of alpha, you plug it into this equation, you can solve it for the case where xi of x is an even function, you will get a value of k, which would allow you to deduce what the energy level E is. And if you do it for the case for this equation, where xi of x is an odd function, you can graph it, you can find an intersection point, but that won't be a meaningful intersection. So we're only interested in intersections where k is positive. So you can try this out, you'll see that you'll only get one solution, and that solution will correspond to the case where xi of x is an even function.